Another common way that conditional subsetting is used is to look for specific strings um, in a long list of items. So to show you an example, we're gonna create a new variable here, another a string vector called possessions. So using the combine function, we're going to make a list of items, starting with car, bicycle, radio, television, and mobile phone. You go ahead and create that item. And now if we wanted to test whether or not a certain item was in that list, you could use conditional subsetting, uh, the brackets, Say we were interested in whether or not car was in that list. And also if radio was in that list. Again, we're using the double equal sign, okay, along with the uh, disjunction or or operator. here. Ah, okay, so I uh, spelled possessions wrong and it went and tried to do the, um, the same test on an earlier variable that I created, which was actually created with some mistakes in it, which is why I created a new one. So let's go ahead and fix that and run it again. And if the two items are contained in that vector, R will return those two items. Okay. If, on the other hand, I said okay, that was not in the list, and ran the same list, well, radio will come back, but cell phone will not be returned. So you can imagine that this could get pretty tedious if you have a long list of items that you want to look up. Um, in those cases, it's better to use the in function. So we're going to uh, give an example here. The in function is just the word in inside these two percentage signs. The term on the left here is what's called our search vector, okay? And then on the right, we're gonna use a target vector. So what R is gonna do now is it's going to take our search vector and our target vector and compare them, and then return another vector of true and false values, basically just letting us know whether or not these two terms are contained within possessions. So within our output, you can see here now that uh, bicycle and car both return true because uh, possessions contains car and bicycle as the first and second value. Whereas the, it also contains these three additional values that don't satisfy that condition or do not match with our, our target vector. So those return false. Okay, the last thing that we're gonna cover in this section is how R deals with missing values. So R, as we mentioned, was created to deal with really large data sets and often data sets contain missing values or they could be uh, NAs or nulls. Um, and so we need to actually tell R how to handle these in order to avoid any kind of confusion. All right, well, let's start with an example. First, we're gonna create a new header called missing values. We're gonna create a new vector variable. And this vector is gonna contain two, one, one, and we're gonna throw in an NA followed by four. Okay, um, rooms is now in our global environment with our NA in there. Now, what if we wanted to take the mean of the values contained in this vector? If we did this, just using the mean function, R is gonna return NA. And the reason it does this is because it can't calculate 
the mean of those values as long as that NA is, is in there. So the way that we correct this is with an additional argument, NARM, and the documentation comes up here is just telling you that what you're doing is specifying whether or not you want R to ignore or remove those NA values in running that calculation. Okay, so if we set it to true and run it again, now it returns the output two, which is just the mean of all the non-null values in that vector. Now this argument works in conjunction with a lot of different uh, functions that serve to kind of return summary statistics. So another example would be maximum. Okay, max would return the max value of that vector. But again, because it contains the NA, it can't do it. But if we use that optional argument, that'll give us four. Now R has a lot more functions that can be used to handle uh, null values in different ways. Um, some of these are for extracting all the non-null values. Others are for counting those null values. Um, so for a more comprehensive list of those functions, refer to page 21 in the PDF. Um, and then check out the practice exercises at the end if you want some additional uh, practice with the skill. Okay, that wraps up lesson two of this series. In our next lesson, we're going to be getting started with data. I'm talking about data frames, which are another really common data type um, used in R. Um, also talking a little bit about how to get some summary information about an entire data set and a lot of other things. We'll hope you stay tuned. Um, just click on the next video to, to continue the series.